up, Pom Pom. Uh, just got a message from the Xian Zhou La Fu. Looks like it'll conflict with our original schedule. It's been a while, my friends on the Astral Express. How's your trailblazing expedition going? Soon, the Sienjo Lawfu will be holding the Luminary War Dance. Those who have aided the Lawfu in overcoming the crisis are cherished allies of the Sienjo. Thus, on behalf of the Seat of Divine Foresight, I'm extending an invitation to attend the ceremony. Your presence would be greatly appreciated. Well, things are getting lively. We've barely recovered from the family's Charmony Festival, and we're already being invited to another special event. Why not think about it this way? Our trailblazing expeditions are turning into blast expeditions, where we eat, drink, and play wherever we go. Blast? Expedition? Yeah! Wherever we go, we eat, play, and have a blast! So, we should leave March behind to take care of the Express? Uh, hey! That's not what I meant! I'm all for some fun! I just hope there won't be any surprise party crashers, like... Friday or Saturday. The Sienjo Lawfu has recently overcome a crisis. By holding the war dance, they're demonstrating to everyone that they've returned to a state of peace and safety. But that's what everyone said before we went to Pentacony. You'll be totally safe under the family's protection. No need to worry. The war dance is not like the Charmony Festival with all its hidden secrets. It's just a festival to honor the Rainbow Arbiter and the Cloud Knights, who fought against the abominations of abundance and protected the Xianzhou ships. Aside from Star Skiff performances, it's mostly martial contests. Nothing too different from the Taikian Roboball contest we've seen before. What do you think, Himiko? Since we've accepted Miss Black Swan's proposal, we should probably head to Amphorius for refueling. Hmm, there's certainly no rush. This trailblazing expedition is quite unique, and the Express needs to be fully stocked and prepared before moving on to the next stop. With Madame Herta's help, I was planning to deliver some Leviathan fossils from Kalinga Abyss to Ron May, member 81 of the Genius Society. It could earn us some favors before we set off. However, it may take a few weeks. Ah, so that means we're not going to the Lawfu. Being an adult means maintaining relationships, whether we like it or not, March. Since we've been invited, it's only right for the Astral Express to attend the ceremony. So, here's the plan. Pom Pom will take everyone to the Sienjo Lafu. Mr. Yang and I will meet up with Ron Mei and fulfill our promise. Meanwhile, you, March, and Don Hung will represent the Express and attend the war dance. What do you two think? <laughs> I don't hear any objections. Now that everyone's on board with the plan, it's time to warp to the Sienjo La Fu. Kalinga Abyss. What does she expect to find there? Current research on the Leviathan merely proves how little we know about such life forms. That's why geniuses are interested in that field. Science is all about uncovering the unknown. Don't miss us too much. <laughs> if I stumble upon some cool leviathan fossils, I'll bring a few back as souvenirs for you. Himeko really knows how to convince people. <laughs> Between leviathan fossils and the war dance, the latter definitely sounds more fun. Uh, by the way, Donhung, this time you'll be taking a stroll with us on the Lafu, right? 
and just let you two wander around aimlessly on the Lofu by yourselves? <laughs> I don't think so. Plus, Mr. Yang is right. The Ambrosial Arbor crisis just ended, and both the long life and short life species are still feeling uneasy. And that's why Jing Yuan wants to organize the war dance to show that the Xianzhou Lo Fu is stable and safe. And uh, since he has extended an invitation, it's only right that I visit my old friend. Uh, coming back to this place brings back so many memories, you know? Uh, hey, I'm not actually gonna recite a poem. I was just thinking about all the twists and turns we went through when we first arrived on the Sienjo. This time, we're not being forced or enticed or chasing after wanted criminals. And we didn't have to sneak in through the cargo dock. This trip has been incredibly smooth. Quite unusual, I must say. I agree. Said General G Let's wait for him in front. Hey, you guys, hold on a moment. Uh, did they just call us? Uh, look at their outfits. They're from Penacony, right? Are you familiar with the Sienjo Lafu? <laughs> we know a little bit about it. What do you need? We are from Penacony. Maybe you've heard of it. We came to this ship to gather interesting materials for making dream bubbles. We just left there. Oh, talk about coincidence. That's great. Do you know any must-see attractions on the Lofu? We did, but the locals were all like, come on, there's nothing worth seeing on the Lofu. It's so boring here. Ha, huh, can't blame them. If someone asked me what's there to see on Penacony, I'd probably struggle to answer too. That's why we're asking fellow tourists. Uh, most of the tourists around at the moment are here to attend the war dance. And that's why we're here too. Yeah, we know about that ceremony. But isn't the fighting ring still closed? I've heard the ring was actually converted from a huge decommissioned Lafu fighter jet. No doubt about it. It's a massive fighter jet. It's got to be larger than a civilian star skiff. But for now, all we can do is wait until the war dance starts in a few weeks before we can board it. We've still got work to do, so we can't just sit around waiting for it to start. That's why we're asking you about some must-see attractions. We're looking for unique experiences that you won't find on Penacony. Our clients love these kinds of dream bubbles the most. You're the expert here. <laughs> Give them some suggestions. That's indeed a good idea. While the dreamscape on Penacony is all artificial, Scale Gorge Waterscape is a celebration of nature's resurgence. It has some remarkable scenery. Awesome. I love being out there in nature. Let's go to Scale Gorge Waterscape first. I'm a bit worried that nature-themed dream bubbles might be outdated. But hey, let's go check it out anyway. See you later. Maybe we'll run into each other there in a few days. Uh, look, Yan Ching's here. Uh, really? Let's go catch up with him. There you are! Everyone, this way! Hey, everyone! It's been a while! Well, it doesn't feel like 
like it's been that long since we last saw you. But, Yen Ching, are you? What's up, Miss March? Uh, they say kids grow up really fast. Uh, Yen Ching, are you a little bit taller than before? <sighs> We've only been away for a few months. Been a while. Oh, you've come along too, Mr. Don Hung. Sorry for the delay. With the upcoming war dance and the Starskip Haven being so busy, things are a little hectic. Seriously? I've never seen the La Fu so lively before. I was a bit worried that holding the war dance right after the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis might be too soon. But, seeing the bustling Starskiff Haven, I understand why General Jing Yuan chose this timing. Yep. There's people from other delves and travelers like you three who've come from afar. With the war dance coming up, there's a huge number of visitors pouring into the Starskiff Haven. The Cloud Knights are working hard to keep the security tight. The General said this ceremony would help the Sienjo Lafu recover from the crisis. It's a way to showcase our martial spirit, reassure people, boost morale, and attract visitors from other planets to promote trade and peace. By the way, the Sienjo Alliance places great importance on this ceremony, too. The Sienjo ships, the Zhu Ming and the Yao Qing, have both sent messengers to offer their blessings. Yeah, I wonder if you've heard of it. It's known as the Star Forge and it's responsible for providing more than half of the Cloud Knight's armaments. The Sien Zhou Ju Ming boasts skilled craftsmasters, and General Lian is a top-notch craftsman himself. Ah, if only I could get a sword forged by him, I'd be on Cloud Nine. By the way, Yen Qing, where are we headed next? Ah, I'm sorry for talking your ear off. The General wants to catch up with you at the Palace of Astrum. He's been eager to hear about how the Express has been doing. <laughs> it's funny how he tries to act all mature, but whenever it comes to something he's interested in, you can really see his childish side. <laughs> I agree. All units, assemble quickly! Get ready to protect the crowd! Huh. Just mentioned security. And now all of a sudden something's gone wrong. Excuse me, I need to go check out the situation. Um, we'll go with you. Eternal. The mood is set. Let the show begin. Like I'm so everything. Burns to ashes. Set to the seas of pain. Not good. For the help? Uh, uh, sorry, no time to chat. Uh, could you give me back my... Uh, I'm sorry, but I'm afraid we'll have to put our plans on hold for now. I need to find out what's going on. 
Wow, we appreciate your rescue, my CNJO friends. Don't you think it's a bit too much to detain us and our cargo? Sorry, but we've been ordered to detain you and your cargo for inspection until we figure out the source of the attack. Once we're done with the formalities, we'll let you and your cargo go. Oh, but this shipment isn't even meant for the LaFu. And it's IPC's patented technology. Who do you think you are to conduct an inspection? According to the protocol, all cargo arriving on the LaFu must go through inspection. Oh, but we didn't officially enter your dock at all. We just sought refuge in your dock because we were attacked by the Borisons. Looks like this argument could go on forever. Let's not get involved in a heated dispute that won't lead to a resolution. Who's in charge here? I need some answers. It's my fault. We let our guard down for a moment. I take full responsibility. With the war dance approaching, safety should be a top priority. Now, tell me, how did Boris and prisoners end up in Starskiff Haven? According to the protocol, Boris and prisoners should be held on a Starskiff and taken directly to the Shackling Prison under strict supervision without ever touching the ground. Who allowed a prisoner transport ship to dock at the passenger terminal? Please don't blame this, Captain. This incident involves the Chu Ming's diplomatic vessel. Who are you? I'm Lu Ju, officer of the Patrol Defense Squad. Thank you for your help, Lieutenant Yen Ching. The situation unfolded rapidly, and it shouldn't be held against the captain. Here's what happened. An IPC transport ship was attacked by the Borisid just before arriving, and the Ju Ming's diplomatic vessel came to the rescue. They fought off the Borisid pirates and imprisoned them on their ship. So, an IPC ship was attacked by the Borisid near the Lafu, and the Ju Ming envoys saved them? Uh... This sounds complicated. Honestly, it gives me a headache too. The Ju Ming diplomatic ship, adhering to standard procedure, docked at the passenger terminal to hand these criminals over to the Law Fu. You know, with all the outsiders flooding onto the Law Fu, the Star Skiff lanes are under immense pressure. The Borison Desperados decided to put up a fight before the prisoner transport Star Skiff could get there. And that's what you just witnessed. We'll make sure these prisoners are sent to the Shackling Prison as soon as possible. I see. It's an unusual situation indeed. I'll report it to the Security Department of the Realm Keeping Commission, and ask for their cooperation in handling the aftermath. <sighs> Maybe I should gather more details from others, so that the Seed of Divine Foresight can have a better understanding of the situation. Please, don't tease me, Miss March. The situation on the Sienjo before the war dance is like a calm lake that can be disturbed by even the smallest pebble, capable of generating far-reaching ripples with even the slightest disturbance. What are those people... I mean, those monsters we just dealt with? Those werewolf monsters are known as Borison. They are abominations of abundance, and we've been fighting them for a very long time. The Borison have been a powerful force for a long time, plundering and enslaving many worlds. The threat they pose is just as terrible as the Swarm Disaster, and the Alliance even had a fierce war with them three decades ago. Their presence has faded over the years, but who would have thought? According to that officer, they attacked an IPC ship near the Senjo Lo Fu. Such a brazen attack seems quite unusual to me. Yeah, that's what I find strange too. It seems like the IPC and the Borison have some serious grudges. Well, enough with the chit chat. The general wants me to take you to the Palace of Astrum. 
I'd love to chit chat a little longer, but there are some things that can't be left unchecked. Hmm? Is it a serious matter? Maybe you'll need our help in hunting down the Borison? Thank you, but it's no big deal. By the way, that young lady who just appeared, she took my sword. I'm thinking of filing a lost property report at the Realm Keeping Commission to see if I can get it back. <laughs> I doubt she did it on purpose. <sighs> Don't remind me. I just zoned out for a moment, that's all. All right, let's not keep the general waiting. Don't worry. There aren't many people out there with that kind of talent. It shouldn't be too hard to find her. There sure are a lot of troublemakers around. Been a long journey, Elder Hwaii. Thank you for your presence. General, I brought our guests from the Express. Uh, oh, I'm sorry for my bad timing. I didn't know you were meeting a guest, General. Don't worry, you're just in time. <laughs> it's been a while, my friends from the Astral Express. All is well when you have friends coming from afar. Allow me to introduce you to General Huayu. He's the Arbiter General of the Sienjo Zhuming, known as the Flaming Heart. <laughs> no need to be so formal. I'm just a tourist here, no different from other tourists who come to attend the ceremony. Elder Huayen is not only one of the Arbiter Generals, but also the Furnace Master of the Artisanship Commission. Besides his martial skills, he excels in forging various weapons. Such talents are unique, even among the Arbiter Generals. Be it Arbiter General or Furnace Master, these are merely titles given to me long ago. I've retired several times already, but... With the current change in circumstances, the Marshal has called me back to duty, and I had no choice but to answer the call. Well, in the end, I'm to blame. Living such a long life naturally brings its share of disapproval. It's, it's an, an honor, honor to, to meet, meet you, General Huayan. It's my honor to meet you, General Huayan. No need to be all formal. Today I'm just a guest on the Lawful, the same as all of you. So, these three are the ones you mentioned, Jing Yuin? The heroes who helped you with the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis? Indeed. There's Don Hong, March 7th, and her. Without their help, I'm afraid the Lawful might not have easily overcome this crisis. So, the Imbibator Lune's reincarnation has returned to the Lawfu and will attend the war dance. I'd love to have a drink with you, should the chance present itself. You're more than welcome, General Huayan. And this young friend is? Yan Qing, my apprentice. He remains by my side as my retainer due to his youth, which I hope will season him with experience. He will stand for the Law Fu's Cloud Knights in the upcoming war dance, ready to take on all kinds of challenges. Great, great! It's a real treat to see so many talented young people around here today. Oh, I almost forgot. This is my apprentice, Yun Li. Oh, 
at you. <laughs> Hello. Oh, you two already know each other? Guess we don't need any introductions then. What a coincidence. I was afraid I'd have trouble finding this girl. Oh? Now you've piqued my curiosity. Tell me, how did you two become acquainted? She helped me capture the escaped Borison prisoners at the Starskip Haven. Allow me to express my gratitude for you. But when you left, you took my flying sword with you. Your flying sword? <laughs> oh, so that's why I found a dagger in my bag. Turns out it's yours. Yes, it is. Now that we've met again, I hope... <laughs> nope, that won't do. Won't do? <sighs> you want your sword back, right? Well, you can't just take it back. On the Jooming, when you lose your sword on the battlefield, you have to reclaim it on the battlefield. <laughs> As for this little sword, it was supposed to strike that escaped Borison prisoner. But unfortunately, its owner's agitated state caused it to fly off like a kite with a broken string, and it missed its target. By the way, if I hadn't caught it and helped it hit its mark, that Borison prisoner would have gotten away. Hold on a second, Lee. You took my sword without even asking, and now you're refusing to give it back? <laughs> so much from Lafu Swordmasters. What did you just say? If you just stepped up and took your sword back from me fair and square, <laughs> I would have totally respected you. But nope, you tried to play it down, expecting me to just hand it back to you like it's nothing. In front of everyone. With all due respect, you don't honor your sword. So you don't deserve it. Hasn't anyone told you that taking without asking is stealing? If you want to settle this with swords, fine. Let's have a one-on-one -on -one duel right now. Yang Ching. <laughs> well, that's more like it. Just be careful. Because I'm not as easy to handle as the Borison. Uh, you two, be quiet and apologize to Yang Ching. Side are you on, Grandpa? I um I don't take sides. It's a small misunderstanding, and an apology would be too much. I've heard about the Zhu Ming's incredible swordplay and craftsmanship. Most notably, the legendary flame wheel octet. Seeing Miss Yun Li, who is among those ranks today, well, I must say she definitely has that fiery edge. Such grandiose names. Some folks love to spin these fancy titles, trying to set the Cloud Knights apart. Yun Li is still just a young girl, a bit awkward and hot-tempered. So please forgive her if she's being rude. Well, everyone, Elder Hua Yan and I have some business to discuss. For now, Yang Ching, why don't you entertain our guests? and take Miss Yun Li to the inn. I'll find another chance to talk with you all. I'd like to express my gratitude to the Astral Express for helping the law food during the crisis. That's so kind of you. I mean, you've already thanked us so many times. Please forgive me for coming at an inconvenient time. You needn't apologize, General Huayan. All right, Yun Li. Take this opportunity to clear things up with Yen Ching. Yeah, yeah. It's better to make friends than enemies. But I won't be heading to the inn just yet. I want to visit Lingsha. She just arrived in the Lafu and could use some help settling in. Yang Ching, once you've helped our guests get settled, go to the Artisanship Commission for me. I've heard about the attack and the detainment of the IPC ship. Chingzu sent word that the IPC members are protesting and wish to have their cargo back. See if you can calm them down. 
Don't get aggressive. Just make it clear that the Sienjo Law Fu has no intention of violating their rights. I'm on it. This is the report Ching Zhu just sent me. Let me take a look. Hmm. Huh. Looks like the General has given me a tough challenge. He wants me to try and help put the IPC's mind at ease. Well, it's not exactly a test. As Cloud Knight officers, we not only learn the art of war and martial arts, but also occasionally have to handle diplomatic disputes. It's just, you know, talking things out isn't as straightforward as duking it out with weapons on the battlefield. This is especially true when you're up against the IPC, with their non-stop corporate babble. <sighs> well, let's not worry about that for now. Shall I take you to the inn?